Okay, mm, the recording is on. So welcome to the Advocacy and Outreach uh, Special Interest Group meeting. Today is uh, June 18th, and we will just discuss a number of topics uh, we have in the list. So the first topic we have is Chinese Terminology Cleanup Project. So we started the discussion in the last meeting, and yesterday we had a Jenkins Governance meeting. So I will just... Uh, do you see my screen? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I still haven't published a video from the governance meeting because I need to clean it up a bit. Um, just because yeah, there was some personal data on uh, the screen. Um, but yeah, if you're interested, we have meeting notes and uh, we have a lot, had a lot of uh, discussions about what we do next. Uh, so at this meeting, we basically agreed on our talk plan. Uh, there is consensus that we want to change all the terminology, master, whitelist, uh, whitelist. Uh, we agreed how we want to approach that. And yeah, basically, uh, we, we spent maybe 30 minutes discussing this topic, maybe more. And yeah, for um, uh, master, uh, right now we don't have consensus on the developer mailing please. Mm, thanks for the Excel start for starting the discussion, uh, but uh, yeah, we need uh, to proceed. And we agreed that we actually, uh, in, we will invite um, contributors to uh, make uh, more suggestions about um, terminology and project ideas. And based on that, we will select um, a number of top items and we will have a public vote for that. And after that, uh, governance board will select um, an option uh, based on this uh, vote feedback. So the vote uh, won't be binding uh, just because to, uh, to avoid trolling or whatever. Uh, but yeah, of course, we will uh, respect the feedback from the community. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have a number of options listed here. But yeah. Obviously, uh, not everyone agrees with the document, uh, but yeah, so we start from there and we have a number of uh, front runners right now in the terms. And uh, yeah, I believe that Alex and Marky will be coordinating the most of this effort. This right, yeah, we have a number of action items, right? So, yeah, also. Yeah, we will be deprecating blacklist, whitelist terminology, but uh, the agreement is that we don't enforce uh, specific terminology, but we make recommendations so that plugin maintainers and core maintainers decide it, what they do in particular cases. But definitely not a um, blacklist, whitelist. And we also intend to start a working group of how it uh, would look like. Um, it would be just a sub-project or whatever you know entity. So instead of uh, doing these discussions at advocacy and outreach, maybe we'll move to a separate meeting, but it's uh, to be implemented. And actually that's it for now. In addition to that, we've got a bunch of pull requests over the past couple of weeks with technology cleanup in uh, uh, different topics. Also, um, the agent terminology epic, uh, now it has uh, a lot more information and guidelines how to contribute. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, we still need uh, to do more on this front. And yeah, he's then you look for roadmap and here, yeah, there is agent terminology cleanup. Here you can see that basically there are guidelines, etc. right inside this story. Uh, well, um, uh, right now Mark is working on the blog post, but uh, yeah, most likely we will just uh, duplicate the information there. Okay, anything on this topic? Just wanted to clarify, if you don't mind, when we're talking about uh, replacing this terminology with more appropriate terms, we're talking, I, my understanding, not only about documentation for uh, Jenkins IO and for plugins, but also changing the names of uh, different deliveries, jar files and uh, yeah. uh, Docker images and so on. Is it correct? So it's uh, uh, correct. So for example, here we have 
a kind of full scope which was identified. Some stories are relatively easy and documentation is a part of easy parts. APIs, uh, etc. cetera, uh, so all stories which involve uh, binary compatibility or whatever compatibility in the equation, they're not that easy. Uh, still, there is a consensus that we need to work on them. Uh, but yeah, uh, my preference would be to start from easy parts because uh, they provide immediate um, benefits uh, for Jenkins users. Okay, so that's the plan. And if someone wants to experiment with API cleanup, please do so. Okay. So um, I guess I should do quick updates on the stories. So for Google Summer of Code, actually, there is no major updates. And it's a good news. So everything goes pretty smooth. Uh, we have seven uh, projects, all projects have a good progress. We already had the demos uh, by several students. Uh, we target evaluation in two weeks. And yep, I think that uh, so far everything is on track. Uh, so nothing specific to report at this special interest group. So, and, oh, like on yep. the on Google Summer of Code evaluations, will there will it be my responsibility as a mentor to uh, do the research to know how to do a good evaluation, or will there be a, a tutoring session from the org admins to coach me on how to do a good job of evaluating that first month? Well, uh, firstly, uh, there is a documentation by uh, Google. Okay. So we didn't uh, plan to do anything specific for tutoring mentors, but that's why we have office hours. So that's why we have our main fees. So if you have something to ask, please let us know. Okay, and yeah, so... Here, okay, for example, in the mentor guide, you can see some... What's, what has happened? You didn't... Um, yeah, right, I didn't click the link. So here, for example, uh, you have evaluation periods, and there is some expectations you can find right here. Great. Uh, but yeah, really, the most of the information comes uh, from... Uh, these sections and we can find more. Great, that that was sufficient, thank you. So yeah. be a self-guided learner is the moral mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll come to the office hours if I have additional questions I need to ask for yeah. clarification. So basically uh, there are two parts. Firstly, if you want uh, to pass uh, a student, if there is consensus between uh, mentors so that uh, a student is passed, then uh, basically the only important thing there is uh, summarize and feedback uh, to the student. If uh, any project uh, mentoring team considers a failing a student, then it becomes a bit more tricky. And then uh, we recommend to contact our partners. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Hopefully Thank you. it won't be needed. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thanks for the guidance. Okay. So the next is Google Season of Docs. For Google Season of Docs, right now we are in the middle of application phase and we have already received a number of applications through the mailing list, which we need to review. And the deadline for applications is July 9th, if I recall correctly. Yes. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six applications or something like that. So. Definitely, it will keep us busy, and we need to start processing that, providing feedback, and yeah, and then it will be also an interesting challenge to make a decision, because the Google Season of Docs is a much smaller scale program than Google Season of Code, as we discussed before. We have options to also run community bridge, etc., and uh, most likely we will uh, do that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we will still need to do project selections according to Google Season of Docs rules. Okay. So, any questions before we move on, especially from Vlad? Uh, well, I guess I guess uh, I'll be waiting for the guidance as as the process will proceed. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, Google Season of Docs is, is quite uh, relaxed in terms of timing, uh, even more relaxed than Google Season of Code. So it's some of code, but still we need to do reviews. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. Just like wanted, oh, go ahead, Vlad. Oh, uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, following up of my application for Google Season of Docs, I uh, created a simple repository on GitHub where I'm summarizing all different kind of resources, issues, possible solutions for topics that I kind of pre-selected. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if those will be approved, but this is just for me in case it needs to be shared. I would be glad to share this as well. Yeah. And it is like all So if you have something like that, please include it uh, into your application because even mm -hmm. if it's a separate doc, it's also part of application. It's a part of prior work, which is quite important. So mm -hmm. and please don't hesitate to reference all such information, all such ideas uh, you can in the proposal. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, so the next topic, open source with, uh, video conferencing systems. So it's one of the meetup for feedback that uh, yeah, basically we use Zoom and we use a Zoom webinar. And one of uh, participants uh, added the topic to agenda is whether you would be willing to reconsider that for meetups uh, and for um, uh, key meetings. Mm. So I'm not sure whether we have a quorum here to discuss that. Yeah, I think that basically it's up to, so in the case of special interest groups, it's actually it's up to the leaders uh, to define uh, what they use. I don't think that we should uh, set any standards there. So for example, Jenkins infrastructure meeting is being held in uh, Jitsi at the moment. Um, many meetings are held in Zoom like this one. And, that, okay. and for online meetup platform, mm, yeah, I believe that we actually have to stay with Zoom webinar, uh, taking scalability concerns, taking all other things. I'm happy to discuss options, but yeah, I'm sure that we are up to moving at the moment. So, oh, like I had mm -hmm. failed to add something to the agenda. Um, uh, I'll just type it into the end if we get to it. Uh, it's a possible webinar for next week on Jenkins 2.235.1. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I've got a right time for it. Is advocacy and outreach this meeting a place to do that, or do you want to do that just separately by email? Well, we can do that right now if you're fine. Okay, so proposal is Thursday. Tim Jacom has accepted for Thursday next week, 2 p.m. UTC. 2 p.m. UTC, right? 2 p.m. UTC, right. And um, Mike Sirioli has also accepted. So, and I Think, I think there's a good chance we'll be able to get Daniel Beck. Uh, if not, I think you and I can cover his portion with regard to the plugin and user experience topic. So we've got a good panel of presenters ready to go. Mm -hmm. And Esther Alvarez has agreed to listen. She won't be a presenter, but she'll be there in case we need her expertise. Okay. So, okay, then uh, let's do that. Uh, do you need any assistance or can you, because uh, there is official process and uh, what we need actually is an abstract so that we can oh. publish that. Right, let me, let me draft that. Why don't you just note the action item for Mark to draft the abstract and uh, get it ready? Yeah. Right, and then propose the let's see, uh, abstract for the meetup, and that goes into the meetup, if I remember right, format. We review it as a draft, and then we publish the meetup once we got the draft approved by everybody. So anyway, we can fast track that. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I think that it would be nice if we announce it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I also want to have a meeting about um, a Jenkins roadmap. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. 
uh, maybe I will schedule it. Uh, well, I guess I have to schedule it to the next week as well. But yeah, it's rather a developer meetup. It's not a user meetup, so it's more relaxed. Right. Okay. So this will be a, an overview of the roadmap. What are you envisioning? A, a summary of the areas of the roadmap and interesting mm -hmm. topics? Yeah, mostly for contributors. Uh, so why roadmap is important, how to contribute, how to propose uh, your topics, etc. cetera. Mm, because yeah, the main objective for me is to actually get roadmap over the line. And because yeah, it looks uh, pretty okay at the moment, but you know for sure that many st stories are missing, which could be added. So mm. poking uh, the community a bit uh, would definitely make sense. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions, comments before we move on? None from me. Okay. Uh, would you also draft a social media image? Yes. Uh, although there, I may come begging for your help. <laughs> if I if I do it badly, I'll come back to you and ask for ask for help. Okay. So anyway, uh, the I most have, important thing is done, we have content. Right, and I have pictures that I can use. So mm -hmm. it's just making them look good and lay out nicely is, is as usual a daunting challenge for me, but I will okay. happily have some fun with it. Okay, uh, great. So uh, let's move on then. Uh, create two many tabs. Okay, so configuration as code demo. Uh, so, Vlad, you wanted to ask a few questions about it, right? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, basically, if you go to the readme file which you put okay. together, uh, there is uh, somewhere you mentioned uh, in case if you are running from Mac OS, uh, you mentioned uh, some parameters like capital D. Uh, just a moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not sure, I guess it is more related to, yeah, I guess this is related to the Marvin command, not the Docker command. Is it correct mm -hmm. assumption? No, actually it's uh, Docker command. Just a second, let me show it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, thanks for asking the question, Vlad, because I had a question from someone about using SOCAT as a replacement for Docker in Docker. So I'm going to be delighted to watch this and ask some questions myself. Well, I'm not uh, going to really run it, uh, but if you want to. Mm, no, yeah, no need. All, just, uh, the, just the fact that you understood enough to write that readme is already encouraging. Uh, well, well, and I just wanted to confirm uh, Oleg and Mark mm -hmm. that I had no problems running this. It, runs wonderfully on Mac uh, by mm -hmm. uh, like pulling it from Docker Hub. But mm -hmm. when like uh, building this uh, previously, not the release which you did two days ago, but previously I had some, some issues, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. But I hadn't tried it with the latest re release which you posted a couple days ago. I guess it is uh, mm -hmm. 2.4, something like this. One yeah. So I think there is actually a bug in the documentation a bit. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Oops. Good. Mm. Okay. Oh, actually, I pushed from master, so it should be fine. So here, just to explain how this demo works, uh, it has an initialization script. So basically, here you can find a file called uh, Jenkins SH2 others stuff and you can see that uh, there is a dev host and dev host if specified it actually adds uh, additional option so basically what you need to do in uh, your command basically it's here so you uh, run image so currently minus minus a uh, um, dev host it points to the current host and I believe that it's just a remainder of uh, the old documentation uh, so it's needed uh, basically only uh, for development. 
So, um, so if you use Docker for Mark uh, on Docker for Windows, I'm sure. something like that. So the whole point here is actually, yeah, you do not uh, do Docker and Docker uh, on this demo, instead of that you connect directly. And this is um, for um, Docker for Mac and for Windows, we effectively run on a se uh, separate machine. Uh, you need uh, to uh, perform additional uh, tweaks. Okay, that's that's why the SoCat yeah. thing, SoCat is providing a tunnel, if you will, or a, a connector between two machines. Whereas on a Linux yeah. environment, I don't have to tunnel two machines because it's on the same same machine. Got it. Thank you. Okay, I will submit a patch later, but yeah, it's just. Uh... Well, uh, it wasn't uh, that clear from the documentation. Thank you very much, Alec, for addressing this. Uh, and uh, just in general, I wanted to address the question. Uh, it is maybe not related to your demo that you provided. And thank you very much. It's like a wonderful mm -hmm. demo, which can be extended to Docker, at least this is my interest. Uh, but in general, uh, would you recommend, uh, I, I guess there is an issue of installing Docker server uh, inside Docker image. Uh, but before there was Blue Ocean Gen uh, Jenkins CI Blue Ocean Docker image, yeah. which kind of deprecated, I guess, or outdated, mm -hmm. although there are still some releases, and it has a Docker installed there, uh, which allowed to write to run declarative pipelines. Uh, uh, I wonder mm. uh, if we install not Docker server, a Docker client inside the image, for instance, which you provided. Do you mm. consider there will be some issues with Docker well, client? Uh, one, one thing to mention is that uh, there is basically no Docker client and Docker server. So there is a single Docker executable. And uh, what it means so that yeah, you have uh, to install um, a client uh, for demos which involve uh, Docker, but uh, really you have, uh, basically it means that you have to install the Docker CLI. Just uh, want to really operate uh, in the server mode because of Docker and Docker and other things. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to remember from where I uh, get images there because here I believe I use uh, Docker and Docker, or if not, I will I use it elsewhere. Second. No, oh, uh, you put the image on Docker Hub. Yeah, but uh, this image doesn't include. Uh, so here, for example, this is the agent image I use. I just opened that, and you can see that well, basically there is no magic inside. It's just tweaked uh, maybe an image. Uh, but I believe that I have images which actually include Docker. I'm just trying to remember where. And yeah, I have difficulties remembering. Um, yeah, they can, I believe that um, in LibreCourse we bundle Docker, let me check. Mm, just a second, CI Docker image, what's that? It's something else. Mm, let, let me check. I believe that we include uh, Docker here. Nope. Okay, I can find it, but basically you just download the client and install it at the right place and you get it running. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. So I'll find it for you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I thought that it's right inside this image. It's not. Mm -hmm. Okay, other questions? Yeah, 
So it's a bit obsolete. Um, I start patching it in terms of plugin set because we use this uh, image as a base, for example, for test environments for dark theme and for tables to diffs migration. So it was updated, but still um, internally it has some issues. So for example, you can go to Jenkins YAML, but here you can discover that my Jenkins YAML is quite humble, just modifies the role set plugin, but the rest, um, or almost everything else happens through Groovy hooks. So I still need to spend some time on migration. Mm -hmm. Do we have some time? Can I ask one yeah. kind of simple question? Silly question maybe uh, regarding this demo. Uh, when I run it, it was wonderful that uh, any person who runs this demo can bypass entering admin uh, uh, password, which is usually taken from secrets. Uh, if you remember, do you know which portion of your demo uh, are responsible for this bypassing this entering uh, admin oh, password? Yeah, that's easy. So basically, you're talking about um, the installation wizard. So here in this demo, this installation wizard is just disabled. And yeah, there is no magic here. They believe it's here. Yeah, run setup wizard false. And after that, uh, the entire setup wizard is disabled because we don't need it. We configure everything as uh, using creation as code with various tricks and um, settings. And where users are actually configured, you can go to any scripts. Uh, and here, they believe that uh, there is authorization. So here you can see that uh, I create three users user, read only manager uh, for permissions, and also admin is created on demand when we request creation of admins. So this part can be easily moved uh, to configuration as code. This part cannot, uh, but at the same time, I'm not sure whether anybody really needs it for demo, for demo purposes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, again. That part is also not needed because authorized project uh, already supports the Jenkins configuration as code. Yeah, mute Mark. That block also can be expressed as config as code. That's good. I wasn't aware. Yeah, of that. a lot of uh, things here could be expressed. So what can it be? Uh, at least easily, it's uh, all this conditional logic. Because uh, yeah, it was a development demo, and yeah, I implemented it in such way. And uh, actually, even in uh, downstream testing demos. So, for example, uh, I have a demo for testing dark theme. Okay, yeah, I'll just show it there. So yeah, this is the demo which is based on this image. Just because I didn't want to configure the entire instance, I took the existing one. And here you can see that I don't use configuration as code to enable theme, etc. because you can see that uh, there is some logic because we might uh, may want to test uh, to test with dark theme, with light theme. You may want to test with different configurations in development mode when you can edit CSS files and they get applied immediately, etc. So here you can see that there are some conditional logic, which is again uh, driven by system properties, uh, which again uh, defined uh, here in Jenkins SSH, um, and which again just uh, defined by make file. So user interfaces actually like that, run live, make. like run preview, etc. Well, I like make, so why not? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a good make file, but well, it does its job. Mm -hmm. I thought the definition of a good make file was it does its job. Uh, and yeah, it keeps working after uh, clean. Because so that's uh, the biggest problem with make files. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Uh, so, um, yep. Yeah. So basically, you can uh, experiment with this demos if you want. But yeah, it's quite straightforward. Okay. So, any questions? Okay, so last topic we have an agenda UI UX hackfest grooming. I'm not really sure that we should do it today because yeah, we already spent a lot of time on other topics. So maybe we could postpone. I will just show what's the current status. 
So I integrated the internal feedback, we uh, got it during the hack first, uh, also feedback form, etc. And uh, currently you can see a document which basically includes all the information. Okay, uh, I took some data from the anonymous form, but yeah, basically what's interesting here is the first part. So retrospective, so uh, what can we improve and what uh, worked well, and you can find uh, all the information here. And again, uh, this document is open for comments, so okay, please so feel free to add something else. And is is that document linked f from the advocacy and outreach notes so I can find it? I'm not yes. sure I'll find, oh, it is great. Okay, so mm -hmm. I can just go from the notes there and and review it again. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think I'd seen it once, but I would love to do it again, review it yeah. to be sure that I've understood. Now, do, do you intend then to do a, we do we want a separate meeting that will review and summarize, or is this is this document ultimately the end of the retrospective? Mm, so practically, I would be interested to summarize this document, um, but at the same time, we have a lot of stories, mm -hmm. and for me, doing a formal retrospective is not mandatory there as long as we collect feedback because after that we can uh, groom it uh, when we start from a new hackathon. Great. So taking all um, the issues with infrastructure, etc. Uh, so I don't uh, have strong preference about uh, having retrospective now. Great. Because yeah. we already didn't do it right after the event. Um, well, I still have to publish a blog post uh, <laughs> for that, but uh, well, things happen. Um, but yeah, so for me, retrospective is, uh, is a rolling document, so we will be processing it for the next event. Uh, that's uh, the document looks like it's captured marvelous amounts of information about the event, so that mm -hmm. when we do the next, we can refer back to it. That sounds great to me. No need for a separate meeting, all the better. Okay, so anything else for today? Not for me. Okay, then I will probably just close the meeting. Um, yeah, I'll publish the recording as well as all yesterday's recording at some time today, probably closer to midnight in my time zone. Yeah, thank you, Oleg. Thanks very yeah. much. Thank you, too. And yeah, I'll stop the recording. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Oleg. Yeah, bye.